Hello, YouTube. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be a video that I originally had intended on doing all together, but the first part of this video kind of got jumbled up in a pile of stuff. So the first video was called Don't Let This Happen to Your Tractor. The second part of the video is don't let this happen to you while you're on your tractor. So basically to refresh everybody's memory because it created quite a kerfuffle, I was not picking on anybody. On both sides of the border. Yes, on both sides of the border. We almost had an international incident. Came close. And uh, sometimes I'll see things on YouTube not based on, like if I see one thing on YouTube that, that don't seem right, I just keep my trap shut and I move on. If I see two or three things happen on YouTube and also see uh, the, I guess, I, I guess the evidence of it coming into the shop as well, then I start to do videos on it. And I'm going to tell you like, again, when I go back to that first video the other day, seeing forks on a tractor drilled out for a ball. I'm guilty of it. We have a tie a forklift. Yep, fork is drilled out. It's got a ball. It's, it has a ball on it. We have the 57 40 with forks. We put a ball on it. But when we put the ball on it, again, just to refresh your memory, we put the fork out close to the center line. That way you're not putting all the stress and the strain on your left or your right uh, FEL arm. So I'm not going to get back to that. I'm going to move on from that and uh, we're going to say look do what you like but be careful because it is highly dangerous. If you look at forks, forks are going to have depending on the brand name, depending on the quality, forks can become they can be heat treated to the point where they're brittle. They wear well, but they're brittle. A fork is designed in such a way, it's that long, and it's designed to be that long so it can get under a pallet. And it's, the weight is equally spread out amongst the fork. Same thing with the other side. If somebody insists on pulling trailers or moving trailers around with their forks, they should have something designed that will the two forks will carry the ball. Possibly two channels, one on each fork, with a channel going across and your ball on that. You get your fork, you get your ball in as close to your FEL arms as possible. I'm explaining this to you now because I'm going to throw a wrench into the equation now very shortly. There's two things that you'll never see a manufacturer do. You'll never see a manufacturer put hooks on their bucket. Why? They don't want the liability. They really don't. I mean, they know people are putting hooks on them. And we all know hooks are handy. But if you were a manufacturer, you wouldn't want the liability. Same thing when you buy a fork. You know, why didn't they put a hole in the fork? I've had it asked to me. Why? Why don't they put a hole in the fork for the ball? Because they don't want you doing that, folks. They don't want you doing it. Even blanks up in the front, uh, skid steer, universal skid steer blanks, with the ball in the front. Folks, I'm gonna tell you something. It's not a real good idea to even use that. It's not a good idea to move your trailer with your FEL, and I'm gonna tell you why. I don't know how many people thought of it. I've never heard of it talked about before, and I've actually told people who operate tractors for 30 years about this, and they never thought about it. The proper way to tow anything with a tractor is on the back with a tow bar. Tow bars are usually equipped, usually come equipped with your tractor, except for these things. The real tiny tractors, the subcompacts, they're, they're I'm going to tell you, they're, they're, they're not designed to tow anything. I don't think compacts are either, but anyway, that's besides the point. So what happens is, you go ahead and you start towing your trailers around, providing they're overweight. 
This only applies to trailers that you're trying to move that's overweight as compared to the tractor. What happens is, folks, tractors do not have front brakes. Right now, this tractor is in two-wheel drive. This tractor only got rear brakes, or a brake will be applied to the rear wheels. So what happens is, you go with whatever you got on the front of your tractor, and you pick up your trailer, and your tractor is going to be light in the rear end because the trailer is too heavy. So let's, let's set up a scenario. Your shop is down over a little hill, and you want to get your goal in life right now is to get that trailer down in that shop. So you hook on your trailer hitch to your FEL, and you start to move ahead, and you start to go down over this little incline. And then you have one of these all oh my so-and-so moments where the back starts to lift because the trailer is heavy. Well, guess what, folks? You've got a situation now where your trailer is out of control and your tractor because you don't have any brakes. She's laying in the RSN. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to have to drop your trailer. Try to get the weight back down in the rear wheels. Probably not easy to do. Well, it's not easy to do, but you could end up out of, totally out of control. So I'm going to give you an idea, something to get used to when you're, if, if you must do this using your FEL or your trailer, here's what I would advise you to do. Put your tractor in four wheel drive. Because what happens is then, is your front wheels are linked to your back wheels. Now the same case scenario. You're going down over this little hill. Your arse end is light. Well, okay, still not good. But where it's in four wheel drive, she's engaged. So these are still linked to your back wheels and she'll start to slow down based on the fact that she's linked up. It could save your life. Now I know the good Lord is saying, Paul, why are you giving these people all this information? Because this is my way of thinning out the herd. Oh my. It is. Because <laughs> people are killing themselves and they're not realizing what they're doing. You know, it's okay to have a, a, a tractor. It's okay to ask the tractor to do a little more than it was designed to do. But people have got to have the mindset that if they're going to do it, they better have a backup plan. And the backup plan is, if you start to go out of control with your tractor, you drop the load. Put her down. And also, if you see an incline and you think, well, I'm not feeling the love between the trailer and the tractor, put it in four-wheel drive. It could save you from going out of control. Wow, sounds good to me. Well, it is what it is. It is, yeah. It is what it is. Save you from yourself. Now, after the last incident with the fork situation, and the person who we were communicating back and forth. Well, Tim and I, it was just what to say it was Tim. Uh, tractor time with Tim. Uh, me and Tim had many conversations and we both agreed, you know. Uh, it wasn't aimed at Tim. It was also aimed at everybody else who's doing this. He inspired it, but he certainly didn't well, cause it, all the trouble. Yeah, it made you realize that maybe there's people that's not aware. Well, you know, it goes yeah. back it goes back to a couple of weeks ago when I did a video on how to start your Kubota or your tractor or your diesel engine properly. Yeah, right. How many people said, I never realized that you had to turn the key a little bit extra to heat the gold clocks. It used to whine and whine and whine and whine and whine. Some people even went so far as to put uh, block heaters in their engines to get their engines to work. And now fellas are saying, you know, since you told that, since you put out that video, I don't even use the block heater. No. So guys, it's a matter of yeah, people not knowing. That's true. People just don't know. And of course the situation was with this. I was afraid that Tim and everybody else who's hooking their, uh, their fork up to a trailer and leaving it on one side or the other was going to cause damage. Okay? This video is about causing damage to you and your property. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is too, you know, Kathy, how many times are you around a trailer when I'm moving a trailer? All the time. Right. My advice to, to anybody using these trailers, or using these tractors, 
is do it the right way. Forget about this. Unless you have a little utility trailer, it's convenient. There's no stress on the machine. Take it and put it where you want with your forks. But these big 16 and 25 feet trailers, whatever you're doing, it's too big. It's not safe. So up here in the corner, I'm going to put a picture of this tractor set up with the three-point hitch on it. I would have done it today, but we got a lot of work on to go today, and I don't have time to pull the back hole off it, and I don't have time to put the ballast box on it, or the quick hitch for the three-point hitch. But you'll notice, like, uh, in one of the pictures, this one here, that I have, I made up a, uh, I got the three-point hitch on it, and I have the uh, quick hitch on it, and then I have a uh, tow bar, a custom tow bar that I made, and it's on it. And that's a real good system for towing a trailer. You can use your three-point hitch to lift up the trailer and you can go on. In the other picture, which is this one here, you will see I modified a ballast box. I made up a ballast box and you can see the holes in it. Put your, your uh, rakes and your shovels and a pick and whatever. Yours never have them because you don't use well, them. Well, I don't use them, so the holes will never be worn out. <laughs> never. I don't even say the paint will come out. I don't even think they ever had any. No, but I mean, at, at the time, I didn't even know we owned a shovel or a pick. No. Well, but I mean, I, they're there if anyone needs well, to exactly, them. you know. But if anybody who do have a pick and know where to find it, yeah. and a shovel, that's what those holes are for. Are for yeah. But if you look down at the bottom of the ballast box, you're going to see a uh, receiver. And, of course, with the ballast box on in that case, you can have uh, a, a, you know your hitch, your ball hitch, and everything put in, it, and you can use that. And that's a real good system for towing because I'll tell you why. You have all the weight on the back wheels. Then the worst case scenario can happen if your trailer is too heavy and these tractors are so short, she'll pop a wheelie on you up here. I highly doubt you'll ever go out of control because you still got your brake, you still got your your wheels to lock up, and it's a much safer system. Uh, I think what most tractor owners should do, personally, and I, I certainly don't want to insult anybody, and I know how convenient it is to have your hitch up front, but I really, truly do believe people have, have got to improve their tractor operating skills. They need to practice backing up with a tractor. They really do. And you know, I operated heavy equipment for years. I drove big 35 ton cat trucks, 55 ton cat trucks, Mack trucks, we drove it all. And how many times have I been in a pit in a 988 or a 992 with the bucket up and I'm waiting for this truck driver to back up in a dump truck with mirrors everywhere and what is he doing? The window is rolled down and he's like this. Head stuck out the window there's 10 tons of stuff above his head. A rock could fall off at any time and kill him. And I blow the horn. And I say, if I see your head outside the truck anymore, you're going to leave the project. Because I was so worried for his safety. Yeah, he could get injured. So folks, tow with the back of the tractor and practice backing up. Now, I know you're going to say, well, it's a long trailer and I can't really see backing up. Well, you know what, folks? Tell you what to do. Go get yourself a couple of two-way radios. Get your better half or your buddy, if you're lucky enough to have one, to go back where you're trying to put the tractor and let him be your spotter. Him or her be your spotter. And back up and do it safely because it's only a matter of time when somebody's going to be fatally, fatally killed on one of these things doing what's going on. And that's my little rent. Yeah, sounds like good advice. Now, considering all this, all the problems that it solved and almost created an international incident, I was going to do a series of safety things. Safety... Tips for tractors. Tips for tractors. Yeah, that's right. And this will be the last one because I'm not going through it anymore. Too hot a topic. It's too hot a topic. It hurts too many. It bruises too many feelings. Yeah, it gets personal. It gets personal, of, and then people, even trolls, they want yeah. to try to antagonize. They want to keep 
mm -hmm. posting and, and, and putting one against the other, and, and that's not my thing. I look personally, no. I just don't want to see anybody getting hurt. No. I, I really don't. If it comes to a point in time where somebody tips over a tractor because of something foolish like that, at least now my conscience will say, well, you know, I hope that they saw the video. At least my conscience can say, I tried my best to keep them alive or keep them from getting paralyzed or keep them from getting run over or keep them from running over somebody else that's around by using the front of the tractor. There's a reason they have three-point hitches. There's a reason why they have tow bars. They're all out in the back. They're never in the front, folks. So I'm telling you, be careful out there. And I mean, there's kids around. There's, there's all kinds of obstacles. So if you've got to back up with your trailer, have spotters around. Have, let them be your eyes and your ears. And be careful out there. So that's it, folks. That's all I got to say. Be careful out there, and God bless.